In this video, I'm going to be talking about one of the most critical concepts in Madden 23, and that is route spacing. Now, this is going to be important no matter what year of Madden you play, no matter what formation you run, you have to understand the general principle of spacing your routes properly to be able to have uh, a higher level of effectiveness. Now, I'm going to show you some, pro, uh, some, some concepts, and then I'm also going to show you kind of what not to do as well. But if you want to learn my five-step passing system, I believe that there's five core concepts concepts that have been proven over the last 10 years of Madden, you can get that ebook completely for free. Uh, the link is going to be down in the description. That will make your passing game 10x better, uh, literally within about an hour. So if you want to learn the five kind of foundational concepts that every Madden offense for the last 10 years have been built on, I really encourage you to check out that ebook. It's down in the description. All right, guys, so route spacing in your offense, and what do I mean when I say that? I'm not talking about the uh, the concept spacing, right? I'm not talking about that, but this spacing does kind of um, speak to this a little bit. It's basically how are you spacing your routes out in the field of play to give them the most amount of effectiveness. And uh, this is something that I actually think is super, super important. Now there's a lot of factors in this. I'm gonna show you a couple different formations. I'm gonna start out in trips tight end. This is my personal favorite. And I'm gonna show you something kind of interesting out of the play PA slot corner. So if you take a look here at this play, one of the things that I'll show you is an example of bad route spacing. So an example of bad route spacing would be if I was to streak Harold Carmichael here, and then maybe like, let's just say I, you know, motion this guy in and snap the ball. Okay, you're gonna notice here that this corner route, if I try to throw this to the left side, yes, that time it kind of got open, but one of the problems with route spacing is when routes run into one another, and this is a really important clarification, when routes run into one another at their final point, that is kind of a big, big, big problem. So let me give you another example um, of a badly spaced route combination, maybe something like this, like a curl and a streak. What you'll notice is this curl is literally gonna run into the corner, the corner is gonna run into the streak, and you see that it, it's just not the greatest uh, thing. I think people miss out on this a ton uh, when developing their route concepts. Now I'm gonna show you an example of the same basic thing, but we're gonna do something just slightly different. Instead of clearing out with this outside receiver, we're gonna clear out with this outside or uh, middle trips receiver. Now this guy can be on anything that we want, all right? So just for purpose of illustration, we are gonna put him on a in route. And what you're gonna notice here is now the spacing is going to be significantly better on the route combination. Now this is gonna be seen a little bit more clearly in zone coverage. And this is another kind of important point. You want your plays to beat both man and zone, but if you had to choose one or the other, routes beat man, route combos beat zone, right? There's routes in the game every year that are specifically designed to beat uh, man coverage. In this year's game, corner routes are really good at beating man coverage. But if you pair a corner route with a streak route, it's going to create a clear out, and then you're going to be able to basically clear uh, zone coverage, as you can see right here. All right. So now let's take this concept and kind of cross apply it into other things. So um, for example, let's talk about the mesh concept. This is one of my personal favorite concepts right here, this little double drags and then maybe having like a little, we, uh, a little wheel route. If I was to take this running back and let's say that just for example, I put him on a swing and I snap this ball, you're gonna notice that the drag route is literally running himself into coverage if I was to do that. The better solution is gonna to be to do something like this. And now the running back is gonna wheel upfield and take the defender out of the way and now this guy has, if he breaks one tackle, all of a sudden this becomes a much better um, a much better concept, right? This is another example of something like this. So let's say for example, that we had like a, like a post route and a corner route. This is not terrible. And again, some of this does depend a little bit on like what is your opponent calling? If they're calling more man to man, this right here is not a bad idea doing something like this uh, where you just have a lot of crisscross. 
The problem with this is it's easy to user, and if they just play like cover three, they can take away your post, and they can take away your corner within the same coverage. And so this is kind of another element of spacing, is you want to make sure that your plays are complementing one another, and really your routes in general are complementing one another. So you see here, this is just a basic cover three. If I run that concept, I can't throw that, I can't throw that, I can't throw that. The only thing I can throw is that, and they're gonna have to, and they're gonna be able to user that. So. You have to think all those things through when you're developing your route concepts. Now, this doesn't just apply to trips formations, and it doesn't just apply to spread out formations. It actually also applies very nicely to tight formations. If you take a look at here, um, how does this route comp this route combo uh, complement one another? Well, what you can do with this is this out route pulls out zones, and then this route beats man, right? So you're using the out route as a pull route for the corner route to get open in a soft spot in the coverage. But what wouldn't work really well would be to do something like, you know, this, for example, where maybe we did like a drag underneath. Why? Because if you watch this drag, it's going to run itself into coverage over on the right hand side of the field. All right. Hash marks also play a big part in route spacing. Um, for example, if I put a streak out here and I put a corner route to the right and I do the same exact concept, they're going to work differently because of the space and because of where we are at on the field. Now, this also leads to this kind of key point of understanding if I'm trying to attack over here on the right side of the field, it doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense for me to just run this right here. Rather, what might make a little bit more sense would be something like this, where now, if you look, this is more of a natural progression. I can look to my clear out, then I can look to my corner, my drag, and then I can look backside to my, my dig if everything is taken away on the play. So, you know, just kind of understanding, like, you don't want a flat route and a flat route, <laughs> you know, like, and it sounds simple, but it's actually a massive, like, I think people just super sleep on this. So an example of a good route combo would be something like this, maybe have a little pull route over here on the left, um, or a little flat, so it clears out the flat. Now there's a ton of space for that tight end to be able to work over the middle of the field. You can cross apply this to no matter what formation that you're running. And if you want to learn the five key passing concepts in Madden, make sure that you uh, check out that free ebook. That's going to be linked down in the description. But thanks for watching today's video. And again, if you want to take your game to the next level, head down to the description and check out that content.